Hey, what's happening? Sorry guys, my still my sleeving is fucked up. So sometimes the episode will go down at 7 p.m. my time. Sometimes it go 2 a.m. my time. And yeah, life is weird. But you know what? I'm trying my best. Let's start the video. Oop. My name is Jordan I'm from Jordan and you are watching the Jordan show today we are reacting to the 13th episode of the Ricky Gervais show with the title freaks like you and me let's watch together roll it that's my best friend few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that alright? <coughs> Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. <coughs> Questions for Carl, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Yeah. The uh, questionnaire that is often featured at the end of the TV program Inside the Actor's Studio. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? <coughs> oh my God. <coughs> I would like him to say, Welcome home, buddy. It's still like I don't believe in all of this shit, just to be clear. Let's see what Kyle will say. Is that how it works? <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> what do you mean? What's the question? Well, I don't know. Uh, you hear so many other things that you have to go through other gates. I can't imagine him being on the door, is what I'm saying. <laughs> if he owns the place, what's he doing there? He could put well, anyone on it. It's St. Peter, isn't it, who's normally minding the gates, famously. Right, so it's him asking me. OK, well, let's say it's St. No, Peter. No, 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 you go through the gate, <laughs> Peter goes, oh, you're expected, um, he's got an appointment, we're going through the guard, go through a few doors, go up top floor, <laughs> right, past the executive washroom, into his big office, OK, that overlooks the universe. <laughs> so what, what? So you've gone in to see God, it's an audience with God, you've died, <coughs> you've gone to heaven, mm. and what would you like God to say to you? at that point? Um, probably just, just say, oh, um, you've done well on that in your life. You never did anybody any harm. So, welcome to the to heaven. Any problems, give us a shout. <laughs> um, you know, here's a little layout of, of like, a, you know, like a little map. It's kind of like... <laughs> I love this. This is a great answer. And my favourite one is you never did anyone any harm. That's, that's great. That's a brilliant thing for God to say. Yeah. So hang on, he's giving you a little map. So he's giving you a little map of the area. It's big. And sort of say, this is where you go for this, this is where you go for that. Um, I'd, I'd probably ask him about the ghost situation. I'd say, am I now a ghost then? Or is this just like another pl planet that I've come onto? Right. Uh, I don't know if he'd answer that. I don't know if he'd be sort of a bit... <coughs> Cagey. Yeah, a little bit like, well, I don't want to panic you and stuff. Um, I'd say, right, is it right that I can see past family and that? Because, to be honest, I'd probably prefer to stay away. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even want to! No, but oh, because the thing is, I've done, all, I've done all that in this life, so it's about moving on to another life and meeting different people, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Otherwise, what's the point? It's just yeah. like the same all over again, but everywhere's white. I mean, I don't know if it is like Do you this. think God would like this podcast? Um, uh, well, I suppose it just kills half an hour, doesn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, but time's not a problem for him, is it? Yeah, it is, because he lives for ages, so he needs loads of filler. I bet he's, <coughs> you know, doing stuff that he's just like, I'm not really into this, but it's something to do, isn't it? It's <laughs> just <Sudoku and> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, I think there'll be just as many problems up there as there is here, because at least people are leaving here. Whereas up there, that's the thing that I'd be worried about the most, actually, that it's really crowded. Because <laughs> it's years and years of dead people, isn't it? <laughs> London does me head in. Up there, it's going to be well busier than that. 
What about teenagers? And um, do you feel that life was better in, say, the 1950s? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't around. So <laughs> do you understand what it was like in those days? Um, You've seen happy days. I don't know. People always say, don't they? Old people always say, oh, uh, you know, it's a better life in the 50s. It's like, yeah, it was for them. Of course it was for them. They're old. <laughs> Being old isn't great, is it? So you're just happy with your lot. I suppose I was happy starting about 1984. <laughs> right. Like a specific year. Why? Why was that? It's just I was free and happy. How old, how old were you? I don't know. Uh, I don't need to... <laughs> He's just counting on his fingers now. 12. Right, OK. And it was just good. So uh, the happiest days of your life were between the age of 12 and 13? Yeah, it was good. I had the world ahead of me. Mm. Um, Little did you know, your hair was going to fall out and you were going to whinge every minute of the day. I had my bike. I like messing about my bike. You had your mates. I had a pet magpie. So you were probably the teenager that you eventually hate? <coughs> probably. Were you a good lad, law abiding? <coughs> I wasn't bad. I just sort of, you know, just potted about. I mean, when people talk about what was on the telly back then, I, I don't have that much memory of it because I was always out. I was always playing out. What were you doing when you were out? Just playing about, just like on a bike or... Just riding in a circle endlessly. <laughs> I'll tell you. Blizzards, I loved it. rain, <coughs> sleep, and tail. I never seemed to be in. I was always... When, when everyone always goes, where were you when uh, Band-Aid was happening? I was always out on my bike. And everything was like... like you and McGregor. A, a memory's always sort of like coming in for some orange and looking at the telly and seeing Princess Diana's getting married and my mum says, have you seen this? And I'm going, oh, I'm going out on my bike. <laughs> I was always doing that. The only time I was in the house... <laughs> this is why you don't know anything, because you never... To be honest, like, that's exactly what they used to do when I, when I, in, my, in my childhood, you know? I was just out. I never actually... And I was just out. Exactly what he was saying. I was just... For me, like, I have this feeling since forever, since I was a kid. That's fuck. I can't believe I'm, I'm alive. You know what I'm saying? Like this is fucking brilliant. You know, you look around you're like, what the fuck, dude? This is amazing. Maybe this is a very good attitude to have while traveling because this is exactly how I feel while traveling. You know, like, uh, I just like you know that that first half an hour in a new country in a new city, and you look up and it was like, how the fuck did I get here after traveling like? five six countries in like two months and then you end up somewhere you never thought you will you will go there and you just look up i was like fuck how did i get here that's the fucking um, that's an amazing feeling to have i think yeah it just like he was saying i was just out i didn't really give a shit about anything else i was just out i miss that guys i miss that I can't wait until I can't wait so I can fucking tr travel again. We're stopped. I know sponsors in the in the in the com in the description down below. There's a lot of links. Sponsor me. Maybe maybe I can travel soon. Yeah, but this is what being a kid's about. But That's what I mean. The information being free. you have, Carl, is as though you've gleaned it as you raced by on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like you know every piece of information you have. Your hair, Thank your you. hair blowing the wind. <coughs> Carl, your hair will blow out one day. Oh, don't talk, stupid, ma'am. Was, was easy. So yeah, 12 to 13 was good. But you see... And it was all downhill from then, was it? 13. It's your teenager then, aren't you? Life got tough. Yeah. How did it get tough? Just straight away when I was 13, my mum was like, you know, oh, it's your 13th birthday, you're a teenager now. Right. And she gave us a quid to go and get a cake to celebrate it. <laughs> Went to the supermarket, got a cake, <coughs> and I just thought, I don't like the look of this. I don't like the look of the way the future is here. <laughs> 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 On his 13th birthday! Well, you were buying a cake, what, what did what you see at the supermarket? Just, it was kind of like, I don't know, I suddenly felt grown up. I didn't like it. But I think you were always about 58, really, with your outlook. <laughs> yeah, my mum always said I was old. She said I was an old baby. <laughs> she said I could frown before I could walk. <laughs> <laughs> so I always had a bit of a worry look on my face. <laughs> didn't say much, just always listened. My eyes moved about more than I did. Just sat there looking around. Looking stressed. Uh, <laughs> My eyes moved around more than I did. Oh dear, couldn't walk. Well, I can't walk, but I'll try and get a bit of movement in my face. <laughs> oh, well, it's a yeah. workout, a baby workout. Hi, oh, babies. Well, if you can't walk, what about your face? Let your face do the walking. It sounds like uh, that horror film. It sounds like Pilkington's baby. Yeah. Just you lying there in your cot. <coughs> I didn't like all the stuff that's set up for you. Like, me, me mum tried to send me to um, like a nursery. I said, no, I'm not having this. <laughs> Just like that. I said, I said, oh my god! 
Oh my god, oh my god, Connor is fucking awesome. He was like, like, you know, he was like five years old. Like, no, I can't, I'm not doing this. When I'm, older, when I'm older and I've got to go, I'll go, but let's leave out this bit. And she said, all right. <laughs> She said, all right, just like that. She She's talking to five-year-old Carl, and it was like, you know, I'm not doing this. And she was like, all right. That he could reason with her. I don't know if he's like, he's three years old with a pipe. <coughs> and you go there, she goes, I, I think not, man. <laughs> I mean, kids don't play out, do they? Kids, you know, parents are scared to let the kids play out, and that's why the streets are dangerous now, because no one's playing out on the streets. Whereas when I was a kid, everyone was out on the streets. The streets were safer. Because there was more people knocking about. Right. Let the kids play out. <laughs> it must be like a constant, like a Larry painting, is front garden, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just <laughs> loads of people just going, walking around. problems. I was sort of taken away by some fella. <laughs> what? Who, uh, I what? <laughs> no, I was, in, I was playing about in the garden. <laughs> yeah. But my dad's mate, Tony. Yeah. He did tiling with him. He drove past. And he saw me looking a bit fed up, so he just leant over, picked me up, took me to the pub. <laughs> now, the thing is, he wasn't panicked. People weren't going, oh, God, where's Carl gone? <laughs> he's out. Just, just, <laughs> no, he's taking the pub. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's four years old, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's down in the pub with Tony, probably, playing darts. <laughs> yeah, I was about three or four. Sorry, so some bloke drives by who happens to be a friend of your dad's, thinks that baby looks grumpy. Yeah. I'm taking him down <laughs> to the that's, pub. that's what it Tony, was like. you bringing a baby to the pub? Uh, yeah, I might do, yeah, we'll bring in ours. <laughs> All right, see you later, mate. Well, that's what I'm saying, whereas now they go, the baby's gone, there's a big full-on panic going yeah, on. Yeah, but I think it says more about your parents than they did. They were turning you were gone, some drunk was driving up in a van, and they're just going, oh, well, we're going down the pub. <laughs> Doesn't Princess Diana look lovely? <laughs> <laughs> this is absurd. So what happened when you got down the pub? I just was there for a bit, and then... Uh, the for, for a bit? Just had a game of pool? <laughs> then my dad came in, and it was like, oh, there you are. Where's my baby? Go in the door, I'm just going to have a quick pint, huh? So, uh, yeah, I think things were better back then. <coughs> well, it's that time again. It's Carl's diary. Yeah. Oh, oh what's he written today? Told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. <coughs> if that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried that an alien could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading <coughs> woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. So, so, firstly, how did you know she was a mind-reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is. So, you know, if it's a band or whatever, it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people. Yeah. And she had them... Um, to sort of use during a thing where they do mind reading and stuff, so right. you get a, a recording get a of the uh, yeah. And she was just there and she was staring at me, like that, just looking over. <laughs> and a dog was sort of looking worried, and they pick up vibes, <laughs> don't they? No, they did. And why was were they looking? I'm not being funny. Were they looking at the roundness of your head? Do you no, think? No, we just just looking at me, and I was sort of panicking a bit. And the more that I was thinking she's reading my mind, I was thinking she she knows that I know that she's reading my mind. So I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind. <laughs> thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Just running about on the beach. He <laughs> <laughs> remembers what he was thinking. No, just so she thought, oh, hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you thought she'd go, oh, no, I'm getting it all tangled up. I've got a cross line here. <laughs> I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! What do you mean? Well, oh! he, had his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Now then, would you walk, how would you walk, would you be walking backwards 
Carl, so that you could walk, so you're basically <coughs> walking forwards. I or, reckon I'd walk would... sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He's solved it again. He's thought it through. Oh. Got home and read my magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Uh, that made the news, that. That was in a proper newspaper in the end. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look all right if it always wore a scarf and a hat. <laughs> the world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders, cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> good idea, isn't it? I mean, I, I, cockroach I mean... men, spider men, what are you talking about? Look at some insects, right? Yeah. They don't have machinery. Yet they're getting by, aren't they? <laughs> they, they, they have their lives like we do. They get up, they wander about, mm. they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. <coughs> so what I'm saying is, <coughs> why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff powers. going about? <laughs> so these powers. But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men. Or, or whatever that's no, what you mean. No, you said that if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, we where's could use the, where's them. The, you've left a big bit out, but when that one-inch cockroach becomes a six-foot bloke wearing a, a jacket... It's just that we always use insects for, like, a bit of fun. You, you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well, but I don't think it's getting the most out of them. Woke up at 9.55am. As soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, did I tell you about the immune system? <laughs> <laughs> Susan. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Imagine, imagine waking up that early. And the first thing you say to your partner, have I told you about the immune system? <laughs> oh, fuck me. And started laughing. I said, it's amazing. She said, not now. Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, shit. Oh, oh, God. Oh, <laughs> Carl, let's give him a list. Top five something. What, what are you interested in? Are you interested in new sport? TV, cars, movies, style. I mean, I'm, in, I'm into weird stuff, but it seems a bit tight to stick <coughs> in a list. What, like what? Well, like, fr you know, sort of freaky people and that. I've got that, I've got that freak book. <laughs> but I don't know if they'd be happy if I call one of them and said, good news, you're at number one. You've got four legs or whatever. I don't know. <coughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> this is the Carl Pilkington Top 5 Freaks in a number five. Um. Probably uh, something not too good at number five, but it's still interesting. Lighthouse Man. Who's that? What's Lighthouse Man? <laughs> What's Lighthouse Man? It's a fellow with a hole in his head. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, what he does, rather than moan about it, sticks a candle in it. Shut up. What are you talking about? Sticks a candle What's in it. What are you talking about? Where is the I hole? I bet he didn't call himself Lighthouse Man, did he? Well, I don't know. It's just what, what he, 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 he got nicknamed. Because he had this old doctor's like, there's nothing we can do. Can't fill it. Thought, what can I do with it? And it was of the days when there was no electric and that. He had to walk about with a candle. Right. So, hang on a minute. Okay, I'm going to have both got a little candle over Stuck a candle in it and he just got nicknamed the Lighthouse Man. So, again, not, I mean, it's not that amazing, but I like the way he, he was sort of energy efficient. Um, so, was it his forehead? No, on the very top of his head. That's perfect. You don't want it in the forehead, Steve. You'd have to walk back with your neck cricks. So he's like a kind of human jack-o'-lantern. Yeah. He's a lighthouse man. What did you see? What, 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 what <laughs> yeah, better I description do you that. need than the lighthouse man? So, yeah, he's probably at number five. Wow, that's at number five, Steve. <laughs> number four. What about pig-faced woman of Manchester Square? <laughs> Again, you're getting what it says in the tin there, aren't you? Right. And he's just this woman who had a face like a pig. <laughs> and uh, the rumour was yeah. that it wasn't a woman. <laughs> Someone said it was a pet bear and they changed it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what oh, God! That's what was, this someone, yes. was this someone you saw? No, no, you just this, is, this is going back. This is, this, years is, this is years and years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when there was loads of, like, weird-looking people. I mean, the fact that it's pig-faced woman of Manchester Square <laughs> yeah. says that there might have been one in... <laughs> Piccadilly Circus. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So there was a lot more of them knocking about back then. Let's assume that, um... 
it was a woman. And the first one, you know, the lighthouse fellow, he's a, he's a human. Do you think people would object because of their disfigurement, deformity, um, a bit like being called freaks, do you think? Well, it, it gave them a purpose back then. See, if you were a freak years ago, it was work for you. You'd have these circus things. Mm. Now, if you've got a funny head, you're on the dole. Uh, number three? What about Elephant Man? Right. Stick him at number three. He's, oh, he's, he's number three. He's, the, he's surely the most famous freak ever to have lived, isn't he? He's the one who got me into it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, sure. He's sort uh, of entry level freak. Yeah. Uh, a gateway freak. Everyone, everyone is aware of him. Mm. If the Elephant Man still existed, right, and you got the opportunity to meet him, and you walked in, a couple of questions. One, what would your first reaction be? And two, what would you say to him? What would your first question be? How would I react? Well, I've, I've sort of <coughs> seen him enough now that it wouldn't shock me. <laughs> so I don't even think I'd flinch. OK. Uh, I mean, like I said, when I first saw you, that, that was... <laughs> That was a, a bit weird. Mm. But now, look, I can look at you. I don't double take or anything. Uh, what would I say to him? But, uh, I'd probably say, where do you get that hat to fit you? <laughs> he always had that on. Where do you get that from? <coughs> that sort of flat cap that he's got. Yeah, yeah that on, really. So, yeah, I'd have him. So he's at number three. Right. Uh, Elephant Man, number three. I can't wait well, for two yeah. and one. Right, OK, number two. Well, I know two. what my number one is. It's just number two now. I don't know his name, but there's a fella knocking about... Well, I don't think he's around anymore. But he had, like, a normal body looking at him. You'd go, what's up with him? He's not a freak. Takes his undies off. He's got two knobs. <laughs> 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 right. Wow. Yeah. OK. Oh, wait, there's nowhere to start. Two knobs. Do you think he, he uses them alternately? Like, I have a way out of this one, I have a way out of that one. <laughs> Or does he just, like, spread the load so he's weeing out of both? I don't think he knows. What do you mean he doesn't know? like a lucky dip. When he goes to a urinal, <laughs> yeah. he, sort of, he can have a little bet with himself. He's just like, I don't know what's going to happen here. So he directly answers <laughs> his trousers out, definitely. So he takes his trousers down, so he, you know... He, yeah, he can't use a Y front. Right. Be, uh... Need more like a W front. <laughs> yeah. So um, he, he pops his kex down <laughs> there. I don't think it's that much of a problem. It's not like... Uh, well... <laughs> I'd prefer that than Elephant Man's head. Well, of course you would. Well, that's what I'm saying. What if you had Elephant Man's knob? Yeah, but he didn't work like that, did it? That's the thing. They said he had the body of an elephant, but that's the only thing that wasn't <laughs> of an elephant standard. <laughs> His knob was normal. Whereas with this fella, it's the other way round. Everything knobs. normal. Took the pants off. Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> But why would you ever take his pants off? No, well, I wouldn't. I'm just saying if... But why, I, don't know, I don't know why you'd be in a situation <laughs> with this man with two knobs standing there with his pants on and you go pop your pants off. You're not a doctor. No, I say if I'm waiting in a, in a cubicle yeah. and he's there. For what? So you're waiting, waiting in a cubicle have, I'm, waiting have, I'm waiting to have a wee at a cubicle. He's oh, taking two urinals up and going, <laughs> you don't need them both, do you? He goes, well, actually, oh, have a look at this. Right. He's got two knobs. Oh, so I didn't see him at two urinals. I saw him at one. Maybe them pointing <laughs> inwards. If you had that, and you, and the, say the first time that you met Suzanne, would you mention that straight up? Would you say, right, before this goes any further, I've got something to show you. <laughs> well, let's see. Exactly, tell me exactly what you would say. Uh, you had normal head then, didn't you? I had, I had the same head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it had like hair in coming out of it, didn't it? And sort yeah. Of like... yeah, but she also had a, a smaller arse back then as well. So <laughs> I think you both been done. Anyway, we need to get to number one. Yeah, number one. Okay, it is. It's, uh, it's Pillow Man. Oh, yeah. Pillow Man. Okay, now explain for those that don't know who he was. He's, uh, he's a fella with uh, no arms and legs, mm -hmm. just a head and a little body. <laughs> Nickname Pillow Man. Well, why is he your favourite? Just because he's amazing. Just the way he, uh, he just got on with his life. He used to light a cig, just using his, like, his lips and his, his tongue and that. Oh, I've and seen not, this. Not it's fully a... lit. He'd buy like roll your own. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the film Freaks, isn't it? Yeah. And he, he, he had a shave it. as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Do you think he, he used to do it? He used to get it in his mouth, and I don't know. Jesus, it's amazing. Did he have Did he have a knob? I think he did because he had some kids. What? He, yeah, he had kids. He was an all right looking fella. He wasn't. He wasn't odd looking. He, should, sorry? No, he looked like Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Imagine him with no arms and legs. <coughs> 
Right, that's odd, though, isn't it? Really? Um, it's weird, but you've got to give it to him. You know, I mean, he's, he's there rolling his own. He's pretty cool looking. I just want to say to people, it's no, you say it looks cool, to, you know, with no arms and no legs to smoke, but don't forget that smoking can stunt <laughs> your growth. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, remember, he was on, like, this, this circus freak show thing with, yeah. like, a bearded woman. Yeah. Right? Um... She isn't really a freak, is it? She's going to have a shave. Have a shave, you're not a freak. Anymore. A bearded woman. Compared to a fellow who's got no arms and legs, a bearded woman, you're going to get out. Um, but there was, there was like a fellow with, with uh, no bottom half to his body uh, called Johnny Eck, was his name. Uh, so, you know, when you're knocking about with that crowd, you're going to get a bit. You're going to get a bit. Have a shave. Good day, lad, me. Oh my god. <laughs> so, yeah, he had kids and they were all normal kids. They had all the limbs. Did his wife had arms and legs? Never saw his wife. Never saw his wife. I think he's. He was probably ashamed of her. She was a bit of a freak. <laughs> For someone like him, you'd think he'd just give up, wouldn't you? You'd think, forget it. What sort of life is it? Yeah. I'm like a, a Mexican jumping bean. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth living. But he just got on with it. He, I mean, to have a shave, I, I don't even bother having a shave some days. No, no. Nor did the bearded lady, lazy fucking bitch. <laughs> so that's why I put that my number one position. Uh, it's just amazing, isn't it, the human? I agree. You know, how, how, you know, whatever you dealt, some people just get on with it. I agree. Um, so, yeah, the pillow man. Or draft excluder, as I prefer to call him. <laughs> <laughs> there you go! Oh. <clears throat> Now, me and Steve are a couple of big shots. We do this for a laugh, but this is Carl Pilkerton's only source of income. This is what you do now, isn't it? This is me full-time job, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of that? Is this that? Uh, me. Why? This isn't what I ever wanted. Because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a purpose, have I? I'm sat here talking about the pillow, man. If it weren't for him, I'd have nothing to say. It just depresses me. That I just wish I had a job where I felt like I was needed. <laughs> and you both, buddy. That's what's up. This is my job. This is what I'm doing in my life. There's absolutely nothing else I'm doing right now. I wish I can say that I am adding to the universe something, you know? It, I exactly feel like Carol right now. And I don't feel needed. No. It's not a proper job. No, it's you? not. We, no, no, we but, need you but, for money for old route. Yeah. I know, but this isn't... I, I, I wanted something that, you know, when you get when you die and that, it's, you, know, you get up to the gates or whatever, and they say, what have you done? And then I'm looking worried, thinking, is the pillow man about? <laughs> <laughs> ah, fucking hell. So yeah, that was fucking brilliant. Ah, guys, like whatever is happening in my life, again, for me, Carl just makes it go away. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but for me, you know, whenever I hear him speaking, and he's saying whatever, okay, I'm laughing my ass off. That's, that's a fucking fact. This is what's happening. And you see me, I can't stop laughing. It's fucking truth. I really can't stop laughing, okay? Anywho, uh, guys, uh, subscribe, smash that like button. And if you're new here, subscribe and tell me you subscribed. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can get notifications whenever I post something new. And if you want to support me and support the channel, there's so many links in the description down below that you can do that from. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace the fuck out. See you. Woo, woo, woo. Don't forget to like and subscribe to get all new videos. Have a beautiful day. If you don't subscribe, you'll never find a girlfriend. That's my best friend.